All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Backpacking America. I am very glad to have you all here for this really important topic, but before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to Innate Cleaning. Once again, Nate does a fantastic job doing interior cleaning and deep cleaning your house. Uh, definitely check out his Instagram, <coughs> which is at Innate Cleaning, uh, and shoot him a DM and tell him Anthony sent you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, I guess I'm a little refluxy today. Anyway, um, uh, ooh, okay. So the important topic. That's right. So basically, I think there's an issue with what. Uh, the general public considers fitness and what fitness actually is. And we do, I do cover this quite extensively with Igor uh, in some of our other episodes where we talk about uh, some of the myths surrounding calisthenics and the, um, um, the misconceptions around, you know, what it can do for you. Uh, I personally believe in functional training. So it's taking a little bit of everything, you know, calisthenics, body weight, kettlebells, uh, cable exercises, resistance bands, cardio exercises, uh, traditional weightlifting, just combining them all together so you can get a uh, well-rounded physique uh, that is effective, but also, you know, is healthy and makes you look good in a natural way. Uh, The gains you get will be natural. There's not going to be, they're not going to be done through, you know, taking uh, these crap supplements, as I like to call them. Uh, like uh, bucked up or smelling salts or, um, you know, 80 gram protein shakes, you know, all these um, synthetic things that you could take, you know, and of course, you know, the pills, the powders and the steroids, you know, all that stuff is is not really good. And it's going to make your body think that it's able to do something when in actual practicality, it can't. What a lot of people don't understand, too, is when they try to do um, exercises, and they want to say they want to do, I don't know, say they want to dumbbell press 80 pound dumbbells, right? But they need to take, you know, creatine supplements and all these things to, to get them to that point. You want to be able to have that strength ready to go when you least expect to need to use it. That means you're actually strong, you know, just like when you should, you know, weigh yourself in the morning before you put anything in your body so you know what you actually weigh before you get your day going. It, it's it's making sure your body's ready in the worst amount of condition, and that's true strength is what you can do when you're least prepared. And this kind of brings us to my big point. Um, this is going to be a Marxist analysis of fitness in our current American society. So we are very obsessed with bigger is better that concept right and that kind of plays into what i was saying before where you know uh people want to lift the the biggest amount of weight possible and they want to have the biggest muscles possible and you know there's nothing wrong with having big muscles there's nothing wrong with lifting big weights it's if you need to do all this crap to do it and end up hurting your body in the process that's a problem it's it's pushing yourself beyond your physiological capabilities uh, to the point where you're becoming a machine and not a man. That's when it becomes, you know, you're alienating yourself from reality, much like capitalism does with labor. So think of it like this, right? You got to consume all these special things, these special protein shakes with the 80 milligram protein and no nutritional uh, backing, all these powders. And for, you know, extreme cases, you know, uh, pills and drugs. And this is true for people with severe body dysphoria where they have to, um, or dysmorphia, I don't really know what it's called, but basically like you feel so small even though you're a lot bigger. And I'm not sure if I have it, but I, I get like that too where I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I look tiny. But then it's like I put on 20 pounds of muscle. So how is that even possible? You know what I mean? Um, it could be just because you're used to looking at yourself all day, but a lot of people get carried away with it where they actually believe they are weak and tiny, so they want to get bigger. So they take these pills and these drugs and expand beyond what is naturally capable. And, you know, the the only way you're going to be able to grow muscle and effective muscle is if you get adequate nutritional food and rest. And that's really... That's really the only way you'll you'll do it, and you're only going to get it to a, to a point because you can't have excess that you don't use. Th- there's no point in having muscles that you're not going to use. The human 
species has evolved over millions of years to shed parts of the body and organs in the body that are not necessary further for human development. So why wouldn't it do that with your muscles? Um, it's important to make sure that, you know, your food, when you eat your food, is that it's clean and healthy. Um, and that's the best way to keep your body running. However, in our country, it's very difficult because we have things called food deserts. So basically, we don't, not a lot of Americans have access to good fruits and vegetables or um, adequate amounts of it. You know, like, like it'll be low quality stuff or low quality meats. Um, if you do happen to have a Walmart super center, it is easier to, you know, get healthier things. Um, but it's Walmart. So, and if it's the one Walmart in town, that's it. You know what I mean? Um, some areas don't even have that. Some areas it's the local grocer and you get what's there and it might not be the best, but at least you'll get fruits and vegetables to a degree. Um, the problem is though, so even if you are able to get, you know, some of these general store items, if you live in a super small town where the nearest grocery store is like an hour away, uh, that's pretty rough. It's going to be hard. And it's really hard for those that live paycheck to paycheck. So a lot of people that live paycheck to paycheck, um, you're exhausted because you're, you're really working as much as you can. So it's very hard to, to get a lift in. And a lot of fitness culture in our society doesn't, you know, take into effect like, okay, well, how do we, like a lot of fitness influencers, they'll, they'll make content, but it's like, okay, well, what can we do for the working person? You know, what, what's something that we could do quick, you know, in 30 minutes or less. And not that it would be for gains. It would have to be, be made clear too, you know, 30 minutes or less of exercise is going to just keep your body moving. You're maybe going to get healthy, you know, 150 minutes of exercise a week is recommended. I get that in a day. So, you know, as long as you get it within a week, I think it's pretty easy to break it down to where um, someone living paycheck to paycheck can have the time to do it and still at least just be healthy. That's the whole goal is health, right? You know, the, the physique that comes with it, um, is a perk, but what really matters is the strength and the health that comes with it. Um, so a lot of people that work paycheck to paycheck, we, you know, we, they eat like garbage and it's because, you know, it's, you don't have time to cook a meal sometimes. Um, I, I wasn't living paycheck to paycheck when I was in college, but you know, when I'd get home from work, I'd be like, you yeah, know, fuck it. I'm going to go to Burger King because it was just right there and I had no energy, you know? Um, it, it, these, but that's a subsistence food. It, it's not good nutrition. It's there to fill your stomach so it doesn't. Det- because what happens is when you're hungry, um, your 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 stomach eats itself and eats your muscle. So when you're when you're starving, you know naturally your body needs energy to keep going. So if it doesn't have um, food enough food in its system, it starts eating away at your body, which is why you know some people do fasts. To, to get rid of their um, the fat. Some people like don't eat, you know, they say diet and exercise, right? Diets, I don't really agree with diets, but, you know, the theory is that like if you don't eat as much and you just have, you know, decent portion sizes, the fat will start to melt away because it's being eaten. Your body is eating the fat for stored energy. Fat is literally stored energy. But then it gets to the point where your muscles will wear away if you lose all that fat. Um... So, but that's the thing. That's the whole point of subsistence foods is that it's supposed to just subsist. It's just supposed to literally prevent that from happening, which is why you know we have a health crisis in this country with obesity, and that's also a national security issue. But that's a whole whole different whole different thing that I don't even want to get into yet. I could go on a rant about that. Um, I do want to say though that you know if you are in that position where say you can dedicate an hour a day. And you don't got a lot of money and, you know, diet's important, you know, what you put in your body is important, but right now we're just focusing on getting you the tools and the materials, right? Um, it is, it's possible to find good, clean food that is affordable. Um, for some areas, it's not true. As I said, if you live in a super rural area, but if you live in the city, if you live at least in like a small rural city, or a large medium or medium-sized town in rural America, you could still get healthy food. Um, 
but you don't need a gym to get fit. Uh, the gym price, the gym price is what keeps a lot of people away from a gym, and understandably so. A private gym, if you're not going to Planet, a private gym is going to cost you about thirty to thirty-five dollars a month, on top of the sign-on fee, which is anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars. <coughs> so you're looking anywhere from like. 80 to 85 to 135 dollars to go to the gym just the first month and then it's you know the recurring month and month after you know but if you're if you don't have a lot of money say you're living at home still um you're literally living paycheck to paycheck or you really just you want to get fit but like you don't know if it's worth the money there's other things you can do literally all you need to be able to do is do different Put, learn like three push-up variations and get a pull-up bar so basically like a pull-up bar i got mine on sale for 20 bucks i know you can actually get them for 20 bucks but you're pulling yourself up so like i don't know like if, if you want to spend some extra money you can but they are on the cheap end 15 to 20 bucks and if you want to risk it risk it but um there's also public parks you know, playgrounds and stuff, they have monkey bars. They have, um, you know, pull-up bars at certain playgrounds. Look for those if you really don't want to spend the money on that. Uh, and push-up variations. There's regular push-ups. There's incline push-ups. And then there's uh, diamond push-ups, diamond ups. Um, so regular push-ups, everyone knows, shoulder width apart, um, you know, palms down, then you just push out, right? Uh, then there's the incline. It's the same concept. But you're elevated, so you could take, like, I don't know, like a small stool, like a step stool or a chair or something, and um, put your feet on it. So that way you're at that, like, that, like, slanted position, and you push up, and you push up and down, up and down, you know, with your feet elevated. So that'll work your upper pecs, and then the regular will work your, your full pectoral. And then um, the diamond ups, it, it does require some chest, but it's more of a um a tricep exercise you do work your triceps when you're doing push-ups but like the the diamond up is really a good um um variation to do there are other variations of push-ups you can do um you can also do weighted push-ups uh by getting a vest or you could put something on your back like a book or backpack if you know you don't want to buy a weighted vest you don't really have to you could just fill a backpack up with crap and, and just send it um you could do um you could also buy resistance bands um depending on where you go i would go to amazon because i i went to dicks to buy um resistance bands and they really try to screw you so like they'll sell you the band but not the handle so you gotta buy the handle set it's a bs you know you're better off just going on ebay amazon or just you know asking a buddy if you could borrow theirs um I'm fortunate enough that my mom was a, a personal trainer when she was younger. So, like, I have some excess equipment just laying around to begin with. So I had that advantage a little bit. But push-ups, pull-ups are, like, literally the first step. And if you can stick to that, like, if you – like, don't even set, like, a high goal for yourself. You could do, like, like five of each a day and you end up really liking it and you like how you feel. Oh, you can also do air squats. I forgot about air squats. Those are so good um, for your legs, you know, just doing like right, squats, but just holding your hands together and just squatting. And then, you know, just go for a walk, go for a mile walk. If you like all that and you can get yourself disciplined, I think a gym membership would be worth it, but you don't need a gym. And if you start buying equipment yourself, it's yours forever and like you could take it wherever. I have two kettlebells, two dumbbells, an easy bar, um, resistance bands, a dip rack, and uh, a pull-up bar. You know, and that I could put all that in my car and that's my gym and I could get a, a full workout in, you know, without a problem. Um, it's it's honestly kettlebell workouts are great. Uh, you don't need to. I mean, honestly, like I've made my delts a lot bigger by just using a 10 pound kettlebell and doing delt slices by just doing one out and then grabbing the kettlebell with the other hand and then doing the other one. Look up alternative slicers, alternating slicers. Uh, it's a delt exercise. Definitely check it out. I mean that 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 was that's a killer workout. You could do the same thing with resistance bands. Um, you don't need a home gym. You really don't. And I wouldn't recommend getting like a bench press or something at home because if there's an accident, you know, and you drop that, 
or you push yourself too hard and you can't get up, you're dead. Like, you die. Um, weights are dangerous. And not that this stuff isn't dangerous. You could still get seriously injured, but, like, you're not going to have a weight choking you to death. Um, and you don't need, like, a million dumbbells and a million kettlebells either. Like, you just need enough to where it's, like, you can mildly progress or just, like, you know, change up the intensity with the different weights to be comfortable. But you don't need to spend, like, 500 to a thousand to two thousand dollars on like a home gym setup like you can literally spend like 200 bucks and then see if you have any leftover equipment if you really want that um and you got the extra money to spare you know you could you could totally do it um there's different things you could even do like with the easy bar sometimes what i like to do is i like to put the resistance bands on each end of it and then i'll do like like resistance pulls with it like for my biceps really awesome stuff um kettlebells are also very versatile you could do literally everything with them as much as you could with like dumbbells um and it's a different way of doing it too i feel like they're more effective and it's a full body and it also activates like the muscle you're focusing on more than dumbbells uh like for example dumbbell shoulder press like with dumbbells you can't really stand up and do that that that's hard it's very difficult and your form is going to be off you have to sit for it, and it's really only working the shoulder. It's not incorporating, you know, the rest of the body. With the kettlebell shoulder press, it's really just activating everything because you have to make sure that you're balanced correctly and that you're holding the kettlebells correctly. So it's quite literally putting tension on. It's, of course, focusing primarily on the shoulder, but it's it's putting pressure on the rest of the body to, to f- support that. It's it's a much more effective exercise, um, and machines aren't really that good either. Um, machines are just kind of like you can't really adjust to them. I'm also short, so like quick story before we move on to like my critique of bodybuilding. Um, when I do like the isolated lateral pushes for chest, like that machine where you're kind of sitting like like you're Luke Skywalker, and then you're like you got you, put, you load the plates on each side and then you push out. Um, that machine is like. I'm short. I it, it just like my feet dangle. Your feet are supposed to be firmly planted on the ground to do that. Um, I, I literally like I can't plant myself. I literally have to push myself back and then just push out. It's not it's not safe, especially if you're tiny. Like it just it doesn't work. Um, there's a variety of other chest exercises you could do at the gym. I personally love the the cable flies. Uh, I love the kettlebell swings and uh, the kettlebell chest press as well as the dumbbell press. That's really all you need for chest. And then, of course, I do dips and push-ups, but that's for different things. Um, but, you know, this this concept about, like, you need, like, a gym to get into great shape is a misnomer. You don't really need that. Um, and another concept, you know, like, a lot of people, when they get into the gym, they want to just look good, right? And they see all these these big dudes walking around and it's like okay like i want to be like that um the problem is like you don't you don't really know like what they're doing so like and a lot of times they don't really either so like you'll see dudes like they look almost fat but muscular and it's that's a result of continuously bulking so bulking is like the process of where you're consistently um building muscle which means high weight low rep and um naturally that's going to increase fat around your muscle so that's when the cutting process comes in and cutting is where you do light reps uh i mean high reps low weight and you kind of scale back your your caloric intake a bit and you know it's just a mess it's you don't really need to i personally don't think you need to scale back your caloric intake i think as long as you just have high intensity exercises and your heartbeat is pounding i think you're gonna get cut muscles um, don't torture yourself because you got to really make sure that you're stick, you, you you know what your caloric intake is like on paper. Like you got to analyze that shit. Um, you have to account for every peanut you eat. You know what I mean? Um, but basically like for bodybuilding, like the goal that most people have is to build big and bulky muscles and they often have no functionality. And that's often, you know, the hallmark of our capitalist excess. It's useless. So why is it useless? Right. It's useless because you get guys that are so big, they can't even tie their own shoes. You don't want to be so big that you can't fit in anything under an XL. 
you know, and that you have to custom order clothes and that you have to buy like $400 of groceries for just you. You know, it's unsustainable. And why? It's to look good. But you don't actually need that much muscle, especially since most people sit at their job or they do very repetitive things at their, you know, at their blue collar job. It's very rare, you know, most people, they either do service industry stuff with um, 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 food service or they do um, they do this, uh, they do office work. They're white collar, you know, so you're not utilizing your muscles, those huge muscles every day. You know, I could see if you were going off to like the army or something, maybe, but like even so. You're going to get winded because you have all this mass on you, right? So what I like about functional training and what, what you know, the glaring oversight of it is, like, you do a pull-up, right? So, like, I, I gained, I was 150 pounds, 15 pounds when I started at the gym. I went to 133. So it was around this point I started getting into calisthenics and wondering, like, what is that? And I did, like, my first few pull-ups. And they were terrible. And they were hard. And I was winded. And I felt dizzy. You know, it was like, I'm in this great shape. I, I'm lean. I'm not, you know, bulky. You know, I'm a short guy, you know, and I could sprint far. But I did like 10, 15 pull-ups. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I was I was out of it. I was like, this is this is insane. You know, so it's if you don't include this, this functional training, like, yeah, it, no, no, wrong point. If you don't, um, if you're too if you start bulking, that's going to be even harder. Like I was able to do like 10 or 15 of them and be like, okay, I'm winded. But like, imagine I was like 170 pounds and I had all this bulk on me and I went to go do a pull up and I did like two, no, I did like one pull up and I was like dying on the floor because I have all this excess mass on me that I just don't really need. Another thing too, is that muscle is much lighter than fat. So a lot of bodybuilders weigh a lot because like they don't have cut muscle they have bulk muscle so like they have a lot of fat surrounding their muscle um if you look at the calisthenics guys they have a lot of um they have muscle they have a lot of muscle and they're still big but like it is cut muscle like you know it's muscle and there's no doubt about it um it, it's very it's very interesting but the reason why just building bulky muscle with no function is useless is because you get no use out of it you can't even use it in your day-to-day you're strong sure but like you're not in able to endure it looks good but it doesn't work good so the thing is you have this overabundance that's useless and that's completely like like the the motto of our country's you know economy we overproduce food and then we throw it away in garbage cans and we don't use it we overproduce phones and tablets and we throw it away and throw it in the garbage and we don't use it. Same thing with our bodies. Our bodies at this point in these gyms and in the media uh, are being looked at the same way these phones and the excess food is. And, you know, I think this is why there's a shift. Now, it may just be, you know, what I'm seeing um, in my periphery, but I'm seeing a lot more people doing functional training. And I think it's being embraced because it's cost effective and it's sustainable. And of course, like, you know, you need good food for all exercise. But you can, the the main draw here, you know, even if you don't have a lot of money or you don't know where to get good food, the main draw to this stuff is that you can do these exercises anywhere. You could do it at your job. Like if you work a desk job, right, you could do like a, like a 15 minute, like, thing you know what i mean like you could do five push-ups five not even 15 minutes you could do in two minutes you could do five push-ups five air squats um and if you can't do pull-ups you know you could do five jumping jacks or something um or you could bring a resistance band with you and you could put it in your office door and then just do like some quick rows and then you could do some like shoulders you know what i mean you could do some shoulder press with the resistance bands and then you just you just hit like the major body parts Oh, and then you could do triceps. You could put um, the door block um, under your door, put your resistance bands through, and then do your tricep exercises. And you could do all that in five minutes, just five reps each, just to keep the blood going, you know, and to just give you that intensity. Um, you could do this at home. You could do this outside. You could go for a hike and do it. You could do it on the beach. You could do it when you're on vacation. 
Um, you could do it at your grandparents' house. You could do it when you're traveling. You know, it's very, very, very portable and accessible. And that's like the main draw to it because a lot of people don't have time or the space or the money to go to a gym and dedicate to a two and a half hour fitness program. So they're just trying to do anything they can to keep their body from atrophying. Um, and, you know, fitness has been blocked by like a paywall of gym fees. This training is only blocked by your own negative thoughts. If you make excuses for yourself and you say, I can't do it, I'll never be in shape, I'll never look like weird image that can never be attained, then, you know, what's the point of working out? A lot of people discourage themselves because they don't think they can do it or they don't think they'll ever look good and they want good results quick. And this is another part of capitalism that I don't like. It instills this ethic that if I don't look like the people on the magazine or the phone or the news, I'm useless. I'm nothing, you know. And that's not true at all, um, like even remotely, because those people often kill themselves or like take Zach Afrin, right? You know, he was in like this insane shape, but he was counting calories. He had this insane gym routine. He, had, he could only eat certain foods. He hated it. He cried when he was eating pasta. He ate pasta for the first time, and I don't know how long it was on film, and he cried. You know, that's not a way to live. That's not that's not sustainable because you're a human being, and, and stuff happens. Um, the whole point of this training is to make things sustainable for what your body needs to do. Um and it's literally only blocked by your negative thoughts. If you need to just get things moving and you just feel like like you need to do something, just drop to the floor and do five push-ups or one push-up even, one squat, one jumping jack, you know, walk around your block and then you did something. You know, and then just slightly increase it. It's not as intimidating too. A lot of people get intimidated by the gym, um, and that that's another thing too. Is that you know they because everyone is jealous of the other person and they want to just be like um, big and stuff. And and the, they also put everyone's got headphones in, so like you actually really have to go up to someone if you want their attention and be like, hey, you know, can I use this machine? Can I ask you a question? How do I do this? Can I, can you spot me? You know, that's very intimidating for someone that's new to the gym and irritating for me because I just hate that. Like, why do you have headphones? Up? Whatever. Pet peeve. But, um, a, a lot of people, um, are intimidated by the gym too, by, by that like clickiness. And that's not necessarily capitalism's fault, but that individualism definitely is spawned by the society we live in. Um, and the negative thoughts definitely are, are put in from the media we consume. Like you have to look this certain way um, in order to be, you know, the pinnacle of man. And not everyone can be. And that's just genetically true and like economically true and Photoshop true. You know, people want to get BBLs instead of doing a squat or a run or something. And I'm going to be honest with you. Synthetic anything looks like shit. Just don't do it. It's not attractive. Um, I, I kind of wrote this down last night. This is a little thought of mine about the functional training thing is that it's a rebellion to the private ownership of capital and private ownership of gyms. So I, I kind of deduced that making fitness privatized has taken the substance of fitness, health, and function and replaced it with vanity and excess bordering lethargy. So basically, um, a lot of gyms are designed... To, I mean, you've all been in gyms. I'm at least hoping. You know, you got you know the bench, you got the dumbbells, you have the the portable benches in front of the dumbbells, so you can do a variety of exercises. Um, if you're lucky, they'll have a um, a pull up section, a functional training section. Uh, if you're really lucky, they'll have kettlebells, and then you have the variety of machines. And it's just kind of like go and do your own thing with no instruction and hope for the best. So basically, the, the this uh, there's also no direction either. There are classes, but you have to pay for them. So you have to pay for the education, and you have to pay for a trainer. The fu the whole point of fitness, health, and function, right? To be fit is to be able to 
um, be in a sound constitution, a good constitution, you know, um, your muscles are firm. They can handle a lot. You can handle a lot of uh, stress on them, and you're able to endure a lot of physicality. Health, of course, you know, um, you know, good clean diet, no crap, no smoking, no alcohol, um, or if you do, just moderate, you know, amounts, because um, that does impact your cardiovascular and neurological system, uh, and function overall. Like, can I move my body? in a normal amount am i able to whoa catch something really quick or can i throw something you know when i'm off guard or can i you know run around the track for a mile and be okay and not be dying and what do i mean by replacing it with vanity excess that's bordering lethargy um basically what i mean is like there is a a focus on oh i want to look good i want to look good i want to look good which who doesn't want to look good i mean i want to look good um i but i you know i my goal was really just like i want to get big so i could fit in my clothes and also be strong enough to do basic tasks without having to ask for help it was really bad i used to be so skinny i couldn't even pick up things when i did manual labor it, it was bad um so you know replacing f- function and fitness and health with vanity um where it's like oh like if you do like the ab machines ab machines are not good um i'm gonna be honest with you i did ab machines for a while and like regular crunches like killed me when i did regular crunches but i could do like the mts ab press at 50 pounds which is very difficult um with no problem so it's putting so much stress on your abdominal organs and at the same time like you get like this weird like ab muscle builtness but it it kind of like looks like you have a stomach at the same time so it's just like the whole point was like the whole point of these machines and like the gym in general is to get big muscle quick but what does it do and is it healthy muscle is it in the right spot where it's you know needed um i i feel like a lot of it's just for vanity um especially with like the chest press machine, you know, like that, there's no need for that. It's, it's a stupid movement. It's gonna, you know, it, it'll sure it'll give you muscle or whatever, but it, it's not, it doesn't do anything really. Um, what it does do is waste your time. I feel, um, with a bench press, you'll get more effective results than doing that. With dips, you'll really get effective results. With push-ups, you'll be in... If you just do push-ups, dips, and kettlebell swings, honestly, your chest is going to be burning more than a bench press because I literally went to do a bench press after two weeks of just doing functional training, and I was able to do my old weight fine. I did like seven reps of my max, and I got up. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just kind of like, wow, that's kind of lame. Um, and that used to kick my butt, but... I, I'm literally a stronger person because of the training and the, the strength the cardiovascular system has where I'm able to just push that weight and it's no problem. Um, but this is the problem with the, the vanity portion, right? Like people will, one, they won't do the push-ups or anything because they see that as warm-up exercises, which is stupid. Um, but where, where it gets to like the, the vanity part of the weight, it's like, oh, what's your bench? What's your bench? You're like, Can you bench, like, how much can you bench, you know? And it's an ego thing, and I'm guilty of it too, but it's just kind of like we we stress about the weight on, um, we stress about the weight that we're able to lift, and at least for men, right? Um, Where it's just kind of like, oh, um, I I need to lift, like, this amount again because I need to make sure that I could still lift it. Like, no pussy shit, I gotta go, I, I gotta max out. You know, and it's just kind of like that's not healthy. You know what I mean? Um, I have a pretty low bench too, and I don't really want to increase it just because it's like I keep getting hurt. My my form or something is off. So it's just kind of like, okay, like leave the bench press alone. You could still grow a chest without a bench press. Um, basically, everyone cares about the weight that they're doing rather than the form. I'll see guys doing, um, you know, bench presses that – it's like they have no business doing or they'll go for like that one huge rep, which, you know, in some cases you need that one huge rep 
to like push you forward and propel you forward, which is fine. But like, if you're going beyond like, I don't know, if your goal is to get to like 300 pounds, like naturally, that's going to be tough to beat. Um, if you want to go for it, but it's just, it's going to put so much stress on your joints and like your, your tendons that you're going to get hurt later on down the line. And it's, it's not like, that's not sustainable fitness. That's like, I want this goal to lift this amount of weights and that's it. And I'm going to get there by any means necessary, which is commendable. I'm a skateboarder. So like, I, I totally understand doing risky shit for the, for the gram and, and for the vibe, you know what I mean? Um, but like with weightlifting, it's a little different. Cause like the, like I'm not going to rip a pectoral ollieing down a staircase I might break my ankle my knees might be shot but like that's a little different than killing your knees on a leg press or a squat rack which I've done it hurts um so basically like by privatizing all this stuff right like we get all this 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 uh ego lifting and we get all this um overtraining and in cases under training really um, the culture of the gym is more individualistic. It's not really, um, like I'll see guys even doing like, um, like not even talking to each other, right? Like just lifting together, not saying anything, just listening to their own music and just being like lifting in the vicinity. And that's called lifting together. And then I also see guys will do like the, the tricep pull down and it'll be like, like it'll be on like a hundred pounds and they're just barely pulling it down. And they consider that triceps and I'm like, bro, that's not that's not triceps that's literally nothing like you got to get like that full extension anyway i feel like if we publicly held the gyms in common right where our classes were free trainers were free um and they were actually paid adequately by the gym um you know th- this would resolve a lot of these in proper form it would have a lot of questions answered it would get people more concerned about how to improve their health and well-being rather than their ego and hiding their body dysmorphia or mental illnesses in reaching unattainable goals. Uh, I feel like a lot of this type of lifting is to, to which is a good thing, you know, at the, at the start, like, hey, let me channel my negative energy into positive energy, but, like, I'm going about it like I still have, you know, negative energy in it. Um, it's being approached from a negative point of view, uh, not a uh, positive point of view. So... Naturally, it's like, what? I'm a fucking pussy. I can't bench 250. What the fuck? You know, it, you know, that's kind of, that's not healthy. It's like, okay, like, I'm just going here to, to work out and, and get fit. And um, over time, I will succeed. A lot of people think it's a sprint, not a marathon. It's actually the opposite. It's a marathon, not a sprint. This is a lifelong journey. Once you start looking at it, um, fitness as a lifelong journey, you're going to be a lot happier. Because the thing is, too, like, um, the body's never the same, right? Like, if you just do this for the vanity purpose, you're going to do it for a couple of years, maybe a decade, and then something's going to happen, life's going to get in the way, and you're not going to go as much. You're not going to take it seriously because you got to do stuff for work or on your mind, you got to think about the kids or whatever. And your body starts to deteriorate because it's used to vanity. It's not used to, like, vanity lifting, which requires a lot of thought, dedication, and attention to but once you stop doing that, it's like, you know, you'll see guys that they live for 10 years, they were in great shape in their 20s. And by their mid 30s, early 40s, they look like shit when they come back to the gym, because they weren't actively training to to for health, they were training for, you know, look, and don't get me wrong, like, I love how I look now. And, you know, loving how you look is great. And that's a good perk of working out. But really, at the end of the day, it's it's making sure that like, your heart's going to function past 50, that your arteries are going to stay unclogged, that you have blood moving and circulating, um, that you don't get blood clots in your legs from sitting all day, that your chance for diabetes is low, and that by working out, you produce more healthy cells. So that way, you know, the likelihood of cancer is lower, knock on wood, hopefully, you know. Um, These are all things that, you know, these are all the health benefits that, that are palpable from working out. And not that you don't get all of them from traditional bodybuilding, weightlifting, but like by just focusing on one thing, it's not going to help. Um, that's why I believe in functional training, doing a little bit of everything. There's nothing wrong with a bench press. 
there's nothing wrong with a push up, but just doing all that by itself, like if you combine the two, you get the benefits of both worlds. Um, if you can only do the the calisthenics end of it, or the and the kettlebell end of it, and the resistance band end of it, that's fine. That's more than enough. But if you also are in that position where you're just kind of like, yeah, but like, I want to play around with weightlifting and kind of have more power behind my muscle and um, have more of a bigger look without giving up too much of my strength and skills through bodyweight training go for some weightlifting there's nothing wrong with throwing in a bench press after your push-ups um the problem is only focusing on weights because with weights you're only targeting muscle groups you're not challenging the body to grow so for example like if you're going to do um if you're going to do like uh um just like a chest press right like you're not really engaging your cardiovascular system to the extent that you could doing anything else. And I feel like if we, you know, had more edu- if there was more education on how the body works, you know, with this stuff, it would be so much better. But basically, you need to build your cardiovascular system to um you need to build your cardiovascular system to make up for all the gained weight you have in muscle and in fat. And basically like A lot of people don't know that and they don't know how to do that, which is why if we, you know, publicly owned gyms, if we had gyms publicly owned, we could have all these trainers in these classes to teach you about how to do things properly. And fitness could be seen as a communal learning effort instead of like everyone coming separately or with their small little group and then never interacting with anyone else because they're too concerned about their music and their lift and and being mindless. You know, it's, it's quite literally, um... It, this can all be fixed literally if we just own the gyms in common and made them places where people can learn how to act, you know, adequately uphold their body. And then people, you know, when when someone come up, came up to them in the gym and was like, hey, let me help you out, you know, it was genuine real help instead of gym bro shit where it's like, yo, try this and it doesn't work at all. Um, it would actually just be genuine help. So I feel like, you know, collectively owning the gyms in common would... would it, cause a wealth of knowledge an explosion of knowledge in um the way the body works the various systems such as the central nervous system the um the cardiovascular system and the lung system (laughs) how that all works and and how they're all you know central to each other i feel like if all this was held in common these would be good starting points um it's a changing the way we view what fitness is in this country and that it's not, you know, how you look, but it's rather how you will survive. So, you know, so to kind of wrap this up, I, I believe functional training is the prioritization of fitness by allowing all, you know, of our working class people to access fitness. It abandons the excess culture of traditional weightlifting or bodybuilding and gym structure that promotes mindless consumption of higher weights. Now, this, you know, mindless consumption has its negative effects. It, and lack of fitness so lack of fitness is one future muscle and joint injuries are another um this excess of our larger society you know causing causing uh, inflation mental health crisis uh, class division social divisions um and eventually you know the breakdown of society a lot of this is you know mimicked through gyms because you know who owns the means of production right who owns businesses the wealthy the bourgeoisie um, who gives loans to these small gym owners, the banks, you know, it, it, you know, the, the profit incentive, the, the way our society is run can be mimicked in all social, uh, venues, you know, from the gym to the coffee shop to the movie theater. And the gym is not a, um, is not excluded from these negatives of excess and greed and individualism excess individualism of course we're all individual individuals i'm violently individualistic but it, it's not um this is to where it's dangerous you know what i mean where it's this dangerous individualism where it's like i am literally plugged out tuned into myself and no one else around me matters and you know something terrible could happen you wouldn't even notice or you're you're denying yourself building community it's it's dangerous because it is denying community it is denying socialization which is 
essential for any society to succeed. So, you know, the, that's that's why, you know, the, the private ownership of a gym instead of held in common is especially dangerous and it mimics all the other crises we have. The breakdown of the human body too, the regimentation of the routine and deviation of the norm is looked at with skepticism. Um, basically, to be different is to be indecent. Um, like, what do you mean you're, you're not that I've ever had this happen, but like, you know, people, everyone does everything on certain days. Like Monday is chest day, Tuesday's back buys, Wednesday's shoulders, legs. Um, oh, actually not everyone does that. I do it weird, but like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, you know, reg basically my, my critique of this is that you don't really need like this to follow the same routine as everyone else. Um, and you don't like say you only want to do kettlebells or you only want to do resistance bands or something like my friends were just they would kind of they would bust my balls like they were never serious but they they'd bust my balls and be like look you're really gonna do calisthenics like they don't work and blah 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 and you know it's bullshit but basically um you know if you're doing something different it's gonna be looked at weird with skepticism so you know naturally i mean the igor even igor talked about it last night People look at me like weird when they do uh, when I do my exercises because I'm doing something different from them. Um, you know that that's a hallmark of our society. Where if you we're now the counterculture is the the main culture. You know what I mean. Um, and you know if you do something different, like I don't know, like my podcast for example, it's a Marxist podcast. It, it looks at things you know or tries to look at them through a Marxist lens, and you know, but while being normal and not you know, fucking weird, like some of these other, you know, Marxist things. Um, but that's looked at with skepticism. Like, like, why is he doing this, you know? Or you'll see people that um, they have different political beliefs. Maybe they're Marxists. Maybe they're libertarians. Or they are, you know, uh, I don't really know what's weird anymore. Um or they belong to the LaRoche organization or something. You know, that's weird. It's looked at with skepticism. Or, you know, if they openly say they're communists, it's like, oh, well, that's weird. Like, like, what are you doing? It's very different. And, you know, it, it's almost seen as indecent or just, you know, like, sus. Like, what, what is this guy doing? Um, and this leads, of course, to the culture of alienation. So this is alienation is present by only wanting to be, um, you know, people, people don't want weird. They just want to be go with the flow, be distracted by their phone or personal music, and create their own little bubble to cut off from wider society. And the gym culture in our country is reflective of the ownership of the means of production. So capitalist profits over human health and prosperity. The the gym literally is a place for people to go. They pay a lot of money. Um they can do whatever they want at the gym. And, you know, they cut themselves off from society and, you know, our jobs want us to cut ourselves off from our coworkers, um, where it's just uh, not necessarily at my job, uh, but like the general throughout the, you know, for the general American work experience, um, it, it's kind of like, oh, what do you mean you're talking about your paycheck or what do you mean you're talking about you know, this or that, or, you know, I'd hear some horror stories of like people getting written up for just socializing, you know, being like, Oh, Hey, how you doing, Jim? You know, blah, 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 you know, forming these little high by casual work relationships. Um, you know, the, the gym culture is, is no less the same. Um, it's definitely reflective of our capitalist system and, you know, the profit over human health and prosperity. That's a thing too. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, calisthenics is like, um, and I know I sound a little dramatic saying all of this, but, you know, I'm not saying that like calisthenics is like, no, get away from our gym. You are bad. Be gone, be gone. But it's kind of like the, the main, fo you know, there's calisthenics parts. I mean, half the gym at my place, you know, they have uh, various pull-up bars and kettlebells and dip racks and, and resistance bands and a boxing section, you know. Um, but what I'm saying is like the culture of it, of lifting the gym culture, not my gym, but the gym throughout the whole country, you know what I'm saying is putting, you know, not putting health and prosperity over profit. The whole goal is profit. It's a business. What do people want? Um, you know, 
not how do we get people healthy? How do we make this gym more accurate and reflective of what our clientele wants? You know, what are we, you know, private gyms will ask, like, when I say private gyms, I mean, like, non-corporate gyms will ask that question a little more. But, like, corporate gyms like LA Fitness, Planet Fitness, um, whatever other massive corporate gym is out there, I, I honestly forget. I think it's really only LA and Planet. Um, but it's more just kind of like, you know, profit over health and prosperity. And even, you know, the privately owned gyms, the non-corporate gyms, um, their, their main goal is profit. Of course it's profit. Um, it, it's, it's going to be kind of hard. Like for example, um, say a bike, a bike, um, section would be useful in a gym unless you got every gym member to petition the owner, you know, to do that. I don't think it's happening. And then it requires, you know, making space. But I, I feel like a lot of, like, the main goal is not health and prosperity. The main goal is profit because they have to survive in a marketplace. If everything was commonly owned, the gym could focus on how do we make, you know, human health and prosperity a part of um, the experience here. You know, free classes, free trainers that are paid well. Um you know, getting rid of those jank machines and actually having, you know, equipment and areas of the workout um, regimen that, that are legitimate, you know, that, that aren't, you know, um, that are going to maximize the amount of stress and, and performance of the human body while um, being accessible at the same point. So, you know, my whole gripe with the gym industry is that it's to be sold, it's to be marketed to, it's to be looked at as a, uh, oh, I want to look better rather than be better. Um, you know, they'll pay all these like gym girls, uh, uh, to be sponsors and to post pictures of them wearing these tight leggings and, and the, the tops and with the special powder and all this stuff. And it's all, it's all not necessary to, to be fit. It's like I said, the gym industry is a business. It's not actually focused on being better. It's selling you the idea of being better while taking out the substance and replacing it with crap. So, you know, fitness is a journey. Basically, what I want to say is that like a lot of people get misled in our current society where they kind of feel like, you know, I want to look like this or that. Just go work out um, to be a better version of you that you feel fit if you're going at it to be like I want to be the biggest guy in the room and I want to do this you're not going to ever be satisfied and it's going to be futile if you're like me and you just want to fit in your clothes and actually be you know be able to lift boxes by yourself go to the gym and you'll you'll be fine and you'll see success and you'll feel kind of fulfilled with that fitness journey I mean it was really bad guys like when I was moving out of my house I was like huffing and puffing like I was wheezing bro like it was really bad. So you want to be able to, to do like all these manual labor things and these physical things. Um, you don't want to get too big. Don't let people lie to you about that. Um, uh. Excuse me. Um, just remember, at the end of the day, whatever you're being marketed to or sold to, even on YouTube, unless it's being made by people that are like really just kind of like you know they're not in it for the profit. They're in it for helping the fit, you know, to, to gain fitness. Um and understanding like Igor, Igor is a good guy. Like, like he, he's really just out there trying to make, you know, people he's sharing his, his information. Whoever wants to take it can take it. He has a group chat where, where people could just go and, you know, talk to each other about these things. He puts out videos every day, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. doesn't really matter. He's just getting videos out there to help people and share his thoughts. And it, it's true. You know, a, a lot of it is just, it's, that's someone that, that actually cares about fitness they're not trying to to market um a, a powder to you or their um their um you know their their shirt and i know i i'm i sell shirts i know i sell shirts for my podcast okay look i want people to wear my apparel so more people listen i see it as free advertising okay i want more people to listen to my show but that's not like the end all be all. The end all be all of my show, this show, is to educate people and to share my opinions. And with this, I feel the current gym industry is completely affected by capitalism, hyper individualism, and just this lethargy. Um, 
if you want now, this is where I plug my shirt. In the link in my bio, there's that Linktree bio. Um, or if you are listening to this on Spotify, um, Apple Music, or wherever you're getting this, in the description of this, there's a big thing that says shop. Um, it's a threadless link. Just click that, and you can get Backpacking America hoodies, mugs, outfits. I Not outfits, uh, shirts, um, backpacks, Backpacking America backpacks, skateboards, the whole nine yards, dude. Um, have at it. And, uh, you know, just think, think about what I said today. If you agree, um, I'd really appreciate a share, a like comment, um, or even just like saying, Oh, Hey, I heard about this today. What do you guys think? Or even if you're listening to this during your lift, um, I hope I gave you some, some insight, some thoughts to take with you, you know, every time you go, like, am I, am I training, for the right reason or the wrong reason and am I doing it effectively or am I doing it because I don't I'm afraid to try something else that's another thing too before I go don't be afraid to switch up the routine I've switched up my routine like three separate times my plan of fitness routine is laughable now because of just how like useless a lot of the exercises were um but definitely um definitely check out um I don't even know what I was going to say. I was going to say check out my routine. I don't even I didn't even post my routine. Whatever. Until next time my friends, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Backpacking America and uh until next time.